when it's successful, there's nothing better. And when it's tragedy, you know, you got to deal with it and move on. Wide awake in the middle of the night. We always have a plan A, a B, a C, a D, an E. For the men of engine 255 and ladder 157, the next call could come in an hour or two hours. Or right now. In just 52 seconds, they're out the door and racing down Flatbush Avenue. The flames lighting up an apartment on the third floor. Firefighters converge on the building, stretching hose lines through the streets, lifting ladders into the air. What happens next happens like clockwork. The response is all carefully planned and rehearsed. The ladder companies come in and set the ladders so they can make their way into the building to rescue anyone who may be trapped. The engine companies then are close behind them with the hose lines. The searches are all negative, no injuries, and the guys did a great job. The attack was so fast, the fire didn't even spread into the next room. If you had gotten here five minutes later, mm -hmm. now it's not just in this room, it's in the entire apartment. Or it's in the apartment, it's made out into the hallway. That's what happened in the Bronx a couple of weeks ago, right? The Bronx fire claimed the lives of 12 people, where the tenant left the door to her burning apartment open allowing the fire to spread throughout the building. Is that the hallway door right there? Watch as this woman in Flatbush does the same thing. In seconds, the hallway is filled with deadly smoke. Impossible to breathe, impossible to see. That's it, the hallway's lights out, you can't see anything. And the people leaving uh, another apartment were overcome by the smoke and were found unconscious in the hallway. <laughs> Firefighters often work in 24-hour shifts, and Eyewitness News was granted a rare inside look. All day, all night, all access. In what may be the most challenging winter the FDNY has faced in years. With hydrants so frozen, they use road flares to thaw them out. It's the firehouse that never sleeps. With some of the most dedicated and upbeat firefighters you'll find anywhere, in America. That's pretty heavy. The gear weighs nearly 100 pounds from head to toe. And when you run into a burning building, there's often so much smoke, you can't see much of anything. We got heavy fire blowing out of the rear windows in the basement. This drill makes the point. I'm the second man on the hose line wearing a mask that simulates what I would see in a real fire. We grope our way into a bedroom, then Mayday, 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 147 to come here Mayday, you're gonna collapse into the basement. We frantically follow the hose line back out. Collapse the floor, let's go, out! After reports that the floor was collapsing. Follow me, follow me. <sighs> wow, it's unbelievable. I mean, you can't see a thing. I mean, I, you can't see. That's what a real fire is like. Can't I mean, see a thing. Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's a level of responsibility that that I think it's hard for most of us to to wrap our arms around. You know? Do you second guess yourself? Even in the successful ones, you second guess yourself. That's the difficult part. It's you're making decisions uh, that matter, and you're making them like this on what you see, and you can't go back, there's no timeouts, and you have one second to make them. And some fires stay with you. For firefighter Pat Rooney, it's Midwood, March of 2015. And the whole first war was on fire. You know, to be honest with you, you get reports of people trapped all the time and they're not there. You know, the one neighbor's like, there's seven kids in there. And you're like, there's no way there's seven kids in there, you know. And put the, my portable ladder up to the bedroom window and went in. And there was a kid laying on the floor. So when you find one, you, it's a surprise. And then when you find out there were seven, it's, you know, it's brutal. And I thought about this fire for well over a year every day, every single day. How do you, how do you get back on the rig and go back into it? Oh, the kitchen. <laughs> the kitchen of the firehouse solves all the problems. The kitchen is the heart of the firehouse, part support group, part comedy club, where they face their fears, swap stories, and build the camaraderie and the confidence to face the next fire. 
we look at each other. It's like a sports team when they say, you know, look to your left, look to your right, look at them in the eye. That's to win a game. You know, when we're doing that, we're looking at it as he's going to give up everything for me if I'm stuck, for the civilians as well. So it's never about the individual, it's about everybody else. Teamwork put to the test 19 and a half hours into the shift, a burning row house on New York Avenue. Ladder 157 arrives in two minutes and 20 seconds. Smoke is pouring from the rear as the second alarm units converge on the scene and the firefighters push their way toward the roaring flames. You can see they've got no time to waste. They're dragging the hose lines deeper and deeper into the building because the fire is spreading. It would take more than an hour to bring the fire under control. There's a lot of fire, a lot of heat. It was, uh, it was going pretty good in there. What about the visibility? Uh, visibility was nothing at all. You couldn't see anything. You actually see orange flickers there, and you know at that point, you gotta do something. You either gotta make a move or get water on the fire or get out of there. <laughs> Firefighter Ryan Raypack was nearly trapped when his right leg fell through the floor. He got very hot, very fast. The good thing he's got all of this. Otherwise, he would have went all the way through the floor. He's <laughs> and it's the best people I've met in my life. Do you have to be a fireman to understand this, do you think? Yes. You know, when we bust each other's chops, sometimes it's very aggressive. Uh, but the reality is that aggressive nature, what it does, it develops a thick skin. So, when you do encounter these situations like you're saying, you're able to, to buffer that and move forward and come into work the next day. New York Avenue. What you try to achieve is for somebody to say you're a good fireman. That's probably the biggest compliment you can get. And that don't come easy. <laughs> <laughs> In Flatbush, Brooklyn, NJ Burke at Channel 7, Eyewitness News.